in the morning. Well, uh, every Friday we do have a guest presenter in uh, the studio. And this week we have Mr. Uh, Muyangwa Muyangwa, who is the uh, Director General of NAPSA. Now, uh, Mr. Muyangwa, this week must have been very, very, you know, exciting and probably challenging for uh, one for NAPSA following President Hichilama's signing into law the National Pension Scheme Amendment Bill of 2023, which sought to amend the 1996 NAPSA Act. The new law allows for partial withdrawal of pensions. How would you describe week one for you as NAPSA? I think it has been a very empowering week economically for our members and I think this, I'll take it back from December. Uh, I think most people don't realize we have actually enacted two huge reform bills since December. On the 6th of December, the president signed on to the ZNPF mm -hmm. and immediately the following day we started the processes. We're ready. Uh, on the 16th, he signed he signed the one on the partial withdrawal and we were ready to go with our systems because we had been preparing for that for a long time. So really it has been a very empowering period for our members and uh, exciting too in that uh, we've seen something that people had been waiting for actually come to be implemented. Mm. And I think now they'll stop saying give us away. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and week one for, uh, you know, for this 20% partial withdrawal, how has it been? It's been, um, I think, quite interesting. We're learning a lot of uh, lessons. Uh, that we didn't expect those numbers to turn up at our offices because mm -hmm. the plan was that we're going to do most of that mm -hmm. online. But uh, definitely people have had challenges here and there. Uh, and the numbers have been coming through to our offices countrywide. But we're up to the task. We have a very committed and vibrant young uh, st young young guys and girls at uh, at NAPSA who are up to the task and they have been eating into those queues like uh, you would not expect. We have the queues in the morning like at six six twenty six today. Mm. There was the marquee that we have put up outside the headquarters was full. The queue was already coming out of that, but I can assure you, if you went there by nine, mm. you would have all these service points around uh, the mall and around the offices, including our own car park. It's now a service point. Okay. And uh, everyone is attending to everyone. Mm. We've taken in all the stuff that are available to just make sure we, we ride this wave because we know once people get through this process, the next process, they don't need to come to, to us. They have no option. They will not be able to come to us. Okay. Mm. Because all they need to do is press a button and say, I've claimed and that's it. Okay. So can you confirm that payouts have started? Yes. 1.3 million paid as at yesterday. 1.3 million? Yes. Mm. That's, that's a good start. Yes, it is. Mm. What, what does that translate to, the 1.3 million? How many members have been paid? Only 27. Uh, so people are As getting, in 27 people? Yes. 27 people got 1.3 million. So okay. So you, you see, by the time we are getting to 100 people, they have the values that we'll be talking about, but we're ready. We, we, we're projecting that we'll get to about... 9, 10, 11 billion, but mm. uh, we, we're ready for that. If you look at the, the response that you got and the number that of the number of payouts that you've had in week one, um, are you moving at the pace that you want to be at, or is it a bit slow on your end? That is on our end, I think the first process that we we designed the process in such a manner that we don't want you to come back and say, I'm not the one that got my money. Okay. So that's a process you see creating the cues of actually validating who you are. So you, you, you have to, we don't use, we use a multiple point verification process, which goes to the banks, it goes to the MNOs and our database. And when you pass all those three, uh, we, we positive that you, that's when you go to the process, the next stage of, uh, of actually claiming. So some of the issues you are seeing uh, people coming up on the queues, they're coming up with maybe queries of the names as held at the MNOs and held at the bank and held in our database are not the same, but the NRC could be the same. Yeah. So we're trying to align all those and make sure it's actually the same person we're talking about. Others are coming in to find out why there are gaps on their, on their contributions, which is a very big, a very big development because before this, no one was paying attention to their NAPSA account. Yeah. 
I'm sure all of you trust. Have, <laughs> you have your, I, I wasn't paying you have attention. Your bank account. Yeah. You would monitor what is happening mm. there every day. Mm. No one would monitor what is happening on their on their NAPS account. And yet, it is a savings account. Mm. You should know how much money you have all the time. Imagine the process where every month your employer deducts a certain amount of money, and you don't care where it goes. Now people are caring where it went, and they are looking for it. And they're getting it. Cause but why do you think that was the case before? The reluctance there? I think it's because of the way people are looking at uh, NAPSA contributions. I think the general feeling you get is that people think it's a tax. They don't look at it as a savings. Mm. So we need to transform that perception and to get people to understand that this is actually a savings account. Mm. But do you, feel as, do you equally feel as NAPSA you've done enough in that area in terms of sensitization? You know? I think partly we, we, we took on we try to internalize a lot of that and say it's a statutory obligation, therefore it's fine. Mm. We should have done a little bit more uh, going out and saying, look, actually, just as much as you have an APSA account, you have an APSA account. Can you check what you say? Okay. If you see now what, uh, what we've been doing is sending SMSs to you every time your yeah, account gets yeah, credited, yeah. even every time it doesn't get credited, you get an SMS and then the statement. That is just to, to ignite the, the interest in the people to check on what is happening on their NAPSA account. Okay. Some of our listeners have, uh, you know, reached out uh, with some complaints of glitches on the system and very frustrating, uh, you know, uh, a login process or procedure. What are some of the common issues your office has, you know, encountered since this process commenced? I think one of the issues is just people navigating the process. That has been quite a challenge for some people. We are all... Our levels of being techy uh, savvy mm. are different. So some people, it might be lower, others uh, much higher. But the, on the lower end, that's where you find the need to be to, for hand-holding through the process. And that's what our staff are doing. Some of it, yes, there could be a glitch here and there, depending on the workload or the, the, or the load on the system at a particular time. It just slows down the process, but then it picks up again and we're able to process but you you'll be you'll be happy to know that i think on the first day we had almost half of the number of people that turned up in person the other half was online and they mm. managed to do their own onboarding without assistance from napsa okay yeah mm. now let's go back to the to the law in simpler terms who is eligible to withdraw uh, partially and what happens at retirement age um to those that partially withdrew and those that may opt out what are the key features of the law let's take a deeper look at so that. There, there are two main key features of the law one is uh, in terms of qualifying one is the fact that you should only have 60 contributions on your account 60 contributions is, is equivalent to five years of mm. of contributing to napsa that entitles you to to a 20 percent partial withdrawal or if you don't have the 60 contributions you should be 45 and above then you are able to access uh, the 20 percent Mm. Now, in terms of what happens to those who access, to, to maintain fairness and equity, remember this is uh, uh, NAPSA, the scheme that we run is, is what is called a defined benefit. Mm -hmm. It's a solidarity scheme. It's not a defined contribution where it's one, one man for each man mm -hmm. for himself mm -hmm. and NAPSA for all. This one is a, a solidarity contribution. So it's like all resources are pulled together and you pay from there. Mm. That's why you find that under NAPSA, you can contribute 50,000 the whole of your life. You can get 5 million the whole of your life, more than you contributed. Even if we factor out the issue of uh, the interest, what people are calling interest, that payout is huge. That's why the system is able to do that. Now, if you withdraw and the other does not withdraw, basically you are saying you cannot be treated the same. You have accessed part of your, your 100%. The other person needs to, hand to, to access the full hundred percent, so you only access the eighty percent that remained. Okay. Yeah. At retirement, that is. Okay. So and for other benefits as well. So all, all the other benefits are going to be eighty percent for 80%. anybody that opts to withdraw twenty percent now. Yes. Okay. And I like the fact that you said opts because mm -hmm. it's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you make a choice. All right. We've also received inquiries on, uh, you know, how the interest is accrued or calculated. Uh, without getting very mathematical, what variables are, you know, taken into account when arriving at the interest to be paid on the amounts to be withdrawn? Yes. 
So it's there's there's a study that uh, a yearly study that uh, Zambia Statistics Office undertakes. Mm-hmm. What's called determining the national average waging in, in sim- simple terms the wage inflation. So you you make sure that the savings are protected from the wage inflation. So that's a factor by which NAPSA grows your contributions to make sure that you maintain that the purchasing power, if you may put it that way, all through your life. So that's it's it's people don't know how much that value actually comes to. But some people should not be surprised when they look at their statement. The twenty percent contribution says sixty one. The payout you are getting is hundred and twenty one because of that very factor we are talking about the uplifting to protect the value mm. using what we call the national average earnings so it's quite significant i think it's one of the best paying uh, savings account you ever have mm. all right now um some quarters fail you know usdg rushed into announcing that you know people could actually start getting their money 24 um hours after the law was passed um would you say perhaps the authority wasn't technically ready to absorb all the requests that were coming in and maybe you should have waited a bit uh, a bit longer after the assenting of the law? How do you respond to that? Those that fail, this whole thing has uh, been uh, rushed. At NAPSA, we have no time for waiting. That's, that's not our DNA. Our DNA is to get things done when they are. We knew all this time that the law was coming. Okay. What people don't realize is we've been working behind the scenes developing that system from last year. Mm. As the law was going through the channels of approval, we're also developing a system to take care of the members. So look at what happened on the Zambia National Provident Fund. The president signs the law today. The following day, we started the process. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what happened, was we were ready. The glitches, yes. But if, if people listen to what I said, I said the process of claiming starts now. And the process is, first of all, you have to validate who you are. That validation is actually the, the lengthy, the lengthiest of the two processes because the payment, once you are validated, it's a click of a button. Mm-hmm. You get your money either in your bank account or in your mobile money account. So that process, yes, people may say we, I don't feel we rushed. We have first glitches, understood, agreed, but there was no need for us to say we wait what would we have been waiting for? Because we were ready. You were ready for the numbers. We were ready. The numbers shocked us okay. because we didn't expect all of them to come through to the office. Mm. And also a few issues we did on the system that we realized was maybe asking too much and we had to relax so that pe- more people can actually be on, 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 on the system and be able to serve themselves. So it is, what would have been worse? I would, I would want to ask those who think we rushed the president signs today and then you start telling people oh, wait till next week i wouldn't have been sitting here they would have lynched me <laughs> that, that's just <laughs> not the way we operate at NAPSA. <laughs> when like. you cannot there was no need for us to look surprised because we knew we were part of the process of, of moving the bill not really surprised obviously the concern is from you being prepared we because we, we've just paid cause, people because of the numbers because of the numbers the numbers is, is a factor that you could not predict. Even the geniuses that are talking about being prepared, I would like them to tell us, how, just ask them how many people they think turned up. They wouldn't have known that. No one would have known that. And that's because there is something maybe this partial withdrawal is going to, to, to reveal to people as to where things are. Mm. You, you didn't expect this? Because this was very popular when uh, President Hakan Shilam actually proposed it when he was in opposition. Yes. It, it was very, very popular. So you, you should have expected at least so popular, this huge turnout of people coming to withdraw. Well, they're not coming to withdraw. They're coming to verify. Oh, to verify. And some to of withdraw. them don't yeah. qualify. Mm. Some of them don't qualify, but they're interested in knowing because they're counting down to 60. Remember, you just need to meet 60. So no. they would rather when they hit 60, they don't need to come back to NAPSA. But you can't turn them away. So we have to process them and get them ready for when they are 60 hits, they get paid. Others are, have already hit 60, they'll get paid. So that's just the process. I, I, we can't say, if you are five, five contributions away, don't come to the office. In the scheme of things, those people are not planned. They are not eligible, so they, they will not get any, any partial for now. But mm. we can't turn them away. Okay. So we have to treat and handle the whole clientele, the whole membership. 
But I think we've we, 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 we've responded well. Okay. Uh, a few people maybe were surprised to, to see what was on the account, mm -hmm. but they are working on them together with my, our staff, whom I must say you need you need. The, the people who are talking need to come and see what those young guys are doing. Okay, L let's get uh, you know uh, broader here with our discussion. For planning's perspective, from an economic benefit analysis. What does the 11 billion estimated total value of the payout uh, do to our economy like ours? Imagine 11 billion injected into an economy. Whatever size, 11 billion is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. The stimulation of activity, economic activity, is, is you cannot even predict what is going to happen. But what we know is that liquidity is going to spare a lot of economic activity. And that's what we need. So in terms of the impact, imagine how many people will be able to say, I'm going to build up my, my small business where I'm, sorry, where I'm running this and that. Or someone says, I'm actually going to invest this in, uh, in government boards, which is what I'm hearing from, from people. We mm. have live testimonies of people coming here and say, when I get my money, I'm putting it in a, in a government bond. Or I'm actually paying off, making a down payment on my plot. Mm. Or I'm actually going to, to buy more, more animals. So you can imagine what that, if you are the seller of animals, mm -hmm. suddenly you have cash because someone has bought your animals. If you are the one selling the plot, suddenly you have cash because NAPSA has given someone a 20% and was able to pay you the balance on, your, on the sale, the transaction that has been hanging for a time. So in terms of impact, the, the, the economic impact is broad and wide. And that's what we are expecting and that's what they were looking for with that with that kind of reform. Remember, the, the, the issue behind this is access to money. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a cheaper way of providing the money than waiting. Most of those people will not afford to go to the bank and get, get a loan or get an overdraft. Yeah. So what do you have to say um, to those that were you know, trying to shoot this down? Obviously, you, you heard a lot. I have a whole list, not to mention names, but what do you have to say? I mean, sentiments like this money will just be wasted you know these people that you want to give this money we're going to have a crop of you know very poor old people it's not a good idea what do you have to say to I those don't, I don't know which who are opposing i don't know which country they live in fly over Lusaka and ask yourself who built those houses mm. those are the same people we are saying they're irresponsible mm. how many people do you know who have two 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 lines of of revenues the salary and something else how many Plenty. Those are some people we are calling irresponsible. Now, there are people who don't want to take action because they fear their fear of the unknown. We are not going to be designing policy on the basis that one percent of the people or two percent are going to be supply the money, and then you deny the ninety-eight percent to spare the economic activity in the country. That's not how policy design works. So, in all that, I'll tell them is. Let's look, for example, bring the people. We are, we are, we are looking for the people. Well, some people have told us what they are doing. Mm -hmm. We have videos of people showing us that last time I got ZNPF, I actually bought so many goats. Now I'm going to get uh, the partial and I'm going to increase the number of goats I own. That's what we're talking about. First of all, there was a complaint that the money is too little. Mm. 20, that's, why not 50? That's, that's subjective. Little compared to what? If you were a fat guy, a fat cow somewhere and you are earning yourself millions and the other guy has 1,000, 20% of 1,000, the value you attach to that is the same. So you can't tell me that a guy who is asking for 5,000, it's too little. It's too little for you, but it's, it's not little for them because that 5,000 is maybe their yearly income mm. or even maybe 1 or 10% of their yearly income. If you ask CEEC, the amount of money that people are applying for. Let's, let's, let's go back to village banking. I, I mean, you heard of people looking for 5,000 on village banking? Mm. Oh, true. So why is it different? Money is money. Okay. Yeah. We're going to go to the headlines. I've got another follow-up question on that. Um, I had a conversation yesterday on the hot seat with uh, CTPD Country Executive Director and uh, Mr. Isaac Maipopo. And he said he would have loved or his proposition is that maybe 
as the fund we sh you should have been loaning the money to the owners of this money at maybe 10 percent and have them pay back in six months and still allow them to continue accessing this cheaper fund and that would have you know uh brought up some sort of stiffer competition for the banks that have these high lending rates but we'll hear your response after the news headlines to that proposition thank you keep it locked right here we have